We are in the middle of Torah Yud Gimel in the Kutimaran called Ashri Hashgacha, and we're in the middle of part five, Ot Hey. Uh, we're speaking about the the Merkava, the higher Merkava and the lower Merkava, which are rectified and fixed when the tzaddik elevates, gathers and elevates the the desires and wants of all the people gathered around him to hear Torah. He takes all these sparks of nefesh, all these nefashot, uh, all these sparks of malchut, all these sparks of holiness, uh, both types, the nefesh that are nefashot, nefesh re'eva, the hungry souls, the ones that are disconnected in a state of separation, fragmented, and the ones that are uh, have a good fragrance, they have a good smell, like the besamim, uh, he takes both of them, both types, and elevates them as female waters, as my nuktin, causing a unification above, and brings down the new Torah as my dechlorin, as the male waters. And, th- and that new Torah that he's drawing down to the people that are gathered around him is, in essence, drawing the hashgach of Hashem, because the Torah is the consciousness of Hashem, and that's Hashem's uh, vision. Um, looking, seeing. And so when he's drawing that Torah, the eyes of Hashem, the vision of Hashem to us, to the people gathered around, he's, bring, he's bringing Hashem's eyes, Hashem's vision upon us so that we are absolutely seen within the eyes of Hashem, completely seen and uh, completely saturated by uh, the sight of Hashem, by the hashgach of Hashem, being seen uh, uh, by Hashem deeply, completely. And so that, these, these two stages, elevating the sparks of Nefashot and bringing down the new Torah, rectifies the lower Merkava and the higher Merkava. The lower Merkava is the Merkava of Nefesh, and it has in it all the components that we're going to see as well today, in today's shear, in the higher Merkava. The lower Merkava has the, the aspect of the four Chayot, um, the four angels, uh, that have, um, metaphorically, they, they're called by different animals. And uh, then you have the aspect of the kisei, the throne. And then you have the aspect of the yoshev ala kisei, the one that occupies the throne. Uh, uh, that there's an Adam, as it says in Yechezkel, in his vision of the Merkava, there was a man sitting on the throne, the form of a man. And you have the aspect of the Ofanim. The Ofanim are the wheels of the chariot. And they are the most, fi- the most physical, most, um, the, the, most outer in, the most outer in clothing of the Merkava. They are the most practical, the most actual aspect of the Merkava. Just like the body, the physical aspect of a person is the aspect through which we actualize our neshama. In the same way, that's what the the wheels of the chariot represent. And so now we're going to see these aspects, these components in the higher Merkava and the Merkava of Torah. Obviously, the lower Merkava and the higher Merkava that Rabbi Nachman is speaking about are being rectified by these two st- steps of the process. This two-step process that the tzaddik does um, is, is very, it's very obvious, it's very clear and it makes sense because the lower Merkava being the Merkava of the Nefesh is the aspect of uh, what the Tzaddik is doing in the first stage of the process, where he's elevating the Nefashot of all the people who gathered around him. And then when he brings down the Torah from above, that is rectifying the higher Merkava, the Merkava of Torah. So it, it's, it's clear that this is the intention here in, in, that Rabbi Nachman has. So let's see here now the continuation in the words of Rabbi Nachman. What is the the higher Merkava, the Kisei Shebedchinat Torah. So he's going to go through the components that we have in the Torah. So I'm just going to go back one more paragraph before uh, where we stopped last, Shir, and where he starts speaking about the four Chayot in the Torah Merkava. There are four Chayot, these four angels that are metaphorically called by these living creatures, right? The lion in the Torah, the Torah is called Oz, 
which means power and might. And power and might is expressed by the lion. The lion represents power and might. Like it is in Pasuk and Shoftim. Veshor Sheba Torah, the ox in, in the aspect of the Torah. Zebechinat bisarim yashoru. Through me, the, 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 the Pasuk says about the Torah that through me, the people, the, the, the rulers, through me, the rulers will rule. Like it's similar to the Pasuk. Uh, the words in the Pasuk, Bim Achim Bim also through me, through the Torah, the kings were the real rule. So here the Sarim Masar is a ruler. Is, um, um, and through me, the rulers will rule. So Yashoru, they will rule, is the, is the word. It sounds like Shor. That's the aspect in the Torah of giving over the power, the ability to rule. The Torah gives over Malchut. The ability to rule is, is received from the Torah. That's the aspect of Shor. The Nesher Sheba Torah, the Nesher, the eagle or the phoenix, is the aspect of renewal. The novel, the novel uh, insights, the novel Torah insights. Um, renew yourself like a, an eagle, like a phoenix. The aspect of Adam in the Torah is the aspect it says about the Torah that the Torah is called Adam. Really, that's not what it says, right? The continuation of the Pasuk is Adam ki amut be'oel, a man that dies in a, in a, in a, in a tent. Um, and it speaks about all the halachot of, of Tum and Tara, of the impurities of a dead person. But, but the drasha is that Zota Torah Adam. That the Torah is called Adam, just like man has 248 limbs and 365 sinews or nerves, so too the Torah has 248 mitzvot asay, the positive commandments, and 365 uh, mitzvot lot asay. And so the Torah is has a kuma shlema. The Torah is made up of all the parts that we have in a physical being as well. And the Torah is the spiritual, the spiritual the inner, the soul of the human being, and therefore it has all these same parts, and it comes and fills up all these parts in the person. And like Rabbi Chaim Vital says in Shari Kedusha, that the intention that we must have when we fulfill a mitzvah, uh, mitzvah asay, is that every mitzvah that we're doing, that mitzvah corresponds to a certain limb in our body. And the intention when you're fulfilling a positive commandment, and this is the kavana that a person can have every time, constantly in every mitzvah that a person is doing. And just by having this kavana increase, this meditation increases, tremendously increases the light, the power, um, and the holy, the holy ruach, the ruach HaKodesh that a person connects to through the mitzvah and the effect, the spiritual effect that it will have on her by doing this meditation is that when you fulfill a mitzvah taseh, your, your mechavin, your intention is that, that the light of this mitzvah that is corresponding a certain limb in my body should fill up that limb with the light of the Torah, of the Itzachayim, with the light of Hashem. And then when you are when you're holding back with your withholding yourself you're overcoming a challenge you're withholding yourself from from doing uh from transgressing um on a certain aver on a certain lota say a negative commandment right so that's also gives a person reward like the gemara says if a person sits and does not do a sin does not transgress he receives reward as if he did a, uh, actual, he actually involved himself um, and did a mitzvah, a, a positive mitzvah, actively did a positive mitzvah. And so when you do that, when you withhold yourself from transgressing, your intention should be that you are unblocking the sinews or the nerves um, the nerves or the sinews are what bring the shefa, the energy of light, 
to all of the limbs. And they're kind of like the channels of energy, the channels of nutrition, spiritual nutrition, spiritual life energy that bring that life energy to each one of the 248 limbs of a person's body. And so when you are withholding your, from doing a transgression, you're overcoming the Yetzer to do a transgression, and you've decided not to transgress, at that point, your intention should be, your meditation should be, to remove any blocks in that specific sinew, that specific nerve that is corresponding to that lotase, that one, that one of the 360, the one of the 365 lotases. Uh, and negative commandments. And by unblocking it, now the nutrition or the life energy is able to be brought into the 248 limbs, into the, the parts of the body, into the other parts of the body. On a spiritual level, this is also intention, your intention is also to do, to bring this light into the, the spiritual body and also to bring it into the physical body. So the physical body receives this uh, spiritual energy and, and that will benefit the physical body, not only physically, benefit it physically, because that spiritual energy is also what gives the body life. When a person eats food and receives nutrition from the food and lives better and lives healthier, it's not the physical aspect of the food that is nurturing the body, it's the spiritual aspect of the food. And so the physical body would also benefit from it, but also physically, and also will benefit from it spiritually. So the physical body will be elevated to a more spiritual state so that it's less, it's, it's less of a block to the soul, for the, less of a block to the neshama to shine through. To, and so those spiritual experiences of the neshama, those pleasurable experiences of the neshama will be more experienced than the physical body. And the body will be more sensitive to them and when you sit down to learn a daf of Gemara, it will be more pleasurable to you. When you stand up to daf in Shmona Esrei, you will experience that pleasure in a deeper, greater way. These are the, So that's the meditation from the holy Rabbi Chaim Bital, whose yurt site was, was, uh, was, when was it? It was on Sunday, right? His yurt site was on Sunday. On Sunday or on Shabbat? On Shabbat, I think. The Holy Rabbi Chaim Vital, this is the meditation that he says one should have in fulfilling the mitzvot, and he brings it in his Holy Sefer Sha'ari Kiddusha, which is a guide for a person to achieve great, great, great levels of Racha Kodesh. Rabbi Chaim Vital was a master in achieving these levels of Racha Kodesh. So let's continue here. So the Torah is also called Adam, because the Torah has all the components of a physical body in a spiritual sense, and it is supposed to in, in be enveloped by the physical body. You're supposed to take that physical body of the Torah and the consciousness and fill up so that it is your soul. It becomes your soul. It is what uh, your whole physical body is just in the glove, so to speak, to that physical, to that spiritual soul, to that holy soul of the Torah, the Adam of the Torah. And therefore, it also has the components that a physical person, physical being is born, is created with. Physical man was created with uh, big nefashot and small nefashot, impoverished nefashot, and wealthy nefashot. In the same way, the Torah has aspects of it which are uh, lenient and aspects of it which are uh, severe or stringent, strict. Kalot v'chamorot, right? Like you have kal v'chomer. Kalva Chomer is exactly that, right? You're learning, you're learning a, a, a chamor from a kal. A, a kal from a chamor. Okay, shehem bechinat miskine v'atire, which is the aspect of the impoverished and the wealthy in the in the in human kind, in mankind. Vechise. So now we just spoke about the four chayot in the Merkava of Torah, and the higher Merkava. Now what about the throne? The aspect of Kisei, the throne, in the lower Merkava, in the Nefesh Merkava, the Kisei is Atik Yomin. It's the hidden one. It's the hidden ancient one. Uh, and the Tzaddik, his soul is hidden. His whole soul is hidden. It's ingraspable. It's in such a high, it, it, it's in such a high place. In the same way, the Torah 
the Kisi in the Torah is also Atik Yomin. It's the words of the Torah, the, the, the insights of the Torah, and the deeper understandings of the Torah, which were hidden by the, by the Keter. Okay, they're sourced in the Keter. Shekisa Atik Yomin, that the Atik Yomin, the Keter, has hidden. Where are those deepest secrets of the Torah hidden, right? That the Keter hid them. They are hidden in the stories of the Torah. Okay, so that's amazing. The Zohar speaks about this. The Zohar speaks about the importance of recognizing that the stories of the Torah are the deepest secrets of the Torah. Um, and it's just that th th those hidden secrets are so high and so deep that they had to be uh, they had to be enclosed in such a in such a simple uh, a seemingly simple uh, clothing, in such a seemingly simple outer appearance of just a simple story of you went here and this one there and all these things that we see in the story the stories in the Torah, it's not laws it's not like the will of Hashem. Uh, sometimes you have a whole a whole conversation going on like with Eliezer and Lavan and all that. And in that, in those, in those words, in those stories, you have the deepest secrets of the Torah, Shekisa Atik Yomim, the secrets of the Atik Yomim, of the Keter. The Yosh, so that's the aspect of the throne when it comes to the Torah. The throne is the hidden, the hidden secrets. And then the one that occupies the, th the throne, obviously, if the throne are the things that were hidden by the Atik Yomim, Right, so then the one that is occupying that throne is the Atik Yomin himself, is the Keter himself. The Yoshev Alakise, who Atik Yomin, the one who sits, who occupies the throne, is the Atik Yomin, is the Keter. Vibchinat ve Atik Yomin Yetiv, as it says in Daniel, that the ancient one uh, sits. Okay, so he is, the, he is the one who occupies the throne. The Ofanim Shebatora, Hen Hen Gufi Alach. And so now, what are what are the wheels of the chariot that we said are the most physical, most practical, most applicable aspects, uh, the most outer expression of that merkava? So when it comes to the merkava of the the merkava of we spoke about the merkava of the nefesh. We said that the ofanim are the bodies. All right, the bodies are the expression of the nefesh. And then here, what is going to be the body of the Torah? What's going to be the body of the Torah, the, the, the expression, the physical expression of the Torah? That's going to be the halachot, obviously. Halacha is the most outer expression, the most practical and most applicable aspects of the Torah. And so that's the gufe halachot. So it fits perfectly. Halachot are called... Uh, one of the ways that Chazal referred to the halachot as the gufe halachot, the bodies of the law. Why are they the bodies of the law? Just like a physical body is the expression of the soul. So the soul of the Torah is expressed uh, practically by the halachot, by the laws. So that's the wheels of the chariot. Be'ofanim shebat Torah. Be'zeh v'ta'anit. So now that, we've now that we have the whole model of this Torah uh, from Rabbi Nachman, Clearly and beautifully, now we're going to start fitting into Gemaras. So he brings a Gemara in Masechet Ta'anit. Ma'aseh de Rabbi Yona. A story with Rabbi Yona. Kadhav aitzterich alma de mitra. Alma rezel ve'ayti bezuza ibura. When the world was needing rain. He said that I will go and I will purchase a zuz that is worth uh, uh, a grain Grain worth a zuz. With one zuz, I will buy grain that is worth one zuz. He was standing in a deep place. And it was a concealed place. Covered in sack, which is sakla. And this will cause the rains to come. Okay, 
So what is the story? What is the story going to allude to all the aspects in this Torah? That's what Rabbi Nachman is going to explain here. So let's see. He said, let me go and purchase a, I, I will purchase grain in the amount of a zuz. Ibur, what's Ibur? So Ibur, there's a big secret in the Arizal about the word Ibur. The word Ibur, like also Eruvin. Uh, the Arizal also says this about Eruvin. Um, uh, Eruv Tafshil and Eruv Tchumin, and the word Ibor itself. Okay, the word Ibor is made up of two parts. The word Ibor is made up of two, you can take that word and split it into two words or two parts. The Arizal teaches us that Ibor is made up of Ab Rayu. Ab, Ayn Bet, Ayn Bet is the gematria of, of Chesed. 72 is the gematria of the word Chesed. It's also the gematria of the name of Hashem, Yud Kevavke, written out with Yuds. And that name represents unconditional chesed, unconditional love of Hashem. It's the name of Hashem that's represented by the world, represents the world of Atzilut. And so that's Ab. So Ab, part of Ibor, represents chesed. The second part of Ibor is Rayu. Rayu is the gematria of Gevura. Uh, Yira is the gematria of Yira. Yira is Yud, Resh, Aleph, and He is exactly Rayu, which is the aspect of Din. But Rayu, 216, also has Chesed in it. 216 is 3 times 72. So 3 times Chesed. Three times chesed is two hundred and uh, three times chesed is the gematria of Rayu. Okay, so that's where the sweetening of that yira happens. Uh, if you if you reduce it to the chesed that it's made up of. Anyways, the point being that ibor is made up of ab Rayu, which represents chesed and gvura, chesed and yira. So ab hu shikuch, says Rabbi Nachman. The Ab, which we said is the aspect of Chesed, the Ab, which is the aspect of Chesed, is um, a sweetening or a laying. Um, it's like a release, a dissolving. Okay? Rayu is a Bechinat Chamimut. On the other hand, Rayu, which we said is Yira, Givura is an aspect of burning, of heat. Okay? That's what Givura is all about. So dissolving, letting go, um, forgiving is an aspect of sweetening. It's an aspect of kindness, an aspect of, of chesed. Whereas the burning up, the firing up, passion is an aspect of gevura. So that's rayu. So you have both of these aspects. Bezuza, he says that he wants to buy the ibura bezuza with a zuz, which is a coin that they had then. Zeb bechinat ta'avat mamon, which is the aspect of the lust for money, right? The coin. Hainu da'azal ishakich ta'avat mamon kanal. So now he, he has established what, what is going on in this story uh, uh, on a deeper level. This story is speaking about Rabbi, Le Rabbi Yona that he's going to uh, dissolve the lust for money. Okay, so the Avrayu, he is dissolving a certain fire, a certain bren, as they say in Yiddish. There's a certain burning up of that is being dissolved, is being forgiven, that is being eased. Um, and what is that that is being eased? What is that burning? What is that lust that is being eased? Bezuza. It's the lust of money. Okay, the Havikai Beatra Amike, and he was. He was standing in a deep place. I think we missed. By having allaying the desire for money, by having dissolved that desire for money, he merited a deep place. What does it mean, a deep place? 
So Rabbi Nachman says a deep place is the aspect of chesed. chesed, Like how, why is chesed called deep? Because chesed, this is actually something we had in Rashi in last week's parsha, Tazriya Mitzora. Uh, by the tzarat, the 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 pasuk says amok min It's deeper than the skin. And Rashi explains that the, that when something is more white, the whiter something is, the deeper it looks next to what is darker around it. Okay. And Rashi brings this uh, expression from Chazal, just like when you see the sun, right? If you're looking out. And you have spots where the sun is shine, the sunshine is reaching and lighting up, and then you have areas around it that are covered by shade. So the area of the sunshine looks deeper than the area of the shade, of the darkness. Okay. So something that is white, whiter, the whiter something is, the deeper it seems. Okay? And that's why the tzarat uh, was lo- looked deeper than the rest of the skin. Anyways, this is what he means here when he says that he was standing in a deep place. What does it mean he was standing in a deep place? The, the deep places always means a more of a chesed place. Now this, what Rabbi Nachman has given us here is, 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 is unbelievable. It's unbelievable, he, this piece of this yesod that he has given us, this perspective that he has given us, opens up worlds for us. It's it's invaluable the the what what the the yesod that he has given us here, because he has explained to us now why and how we should see chesed. Chesed is always deeper. Okay, whenever you see something and there's judgment, energy, if you go beyond the surface, every layer deeper that you penetrate, and that energy you will, will get to a to a, a place of, of more chesed. Okay, so the judgment is only an outside appearance of things. And the reason why, a beautiful metaphor, a beautiful mashal to understand that, is how the sun, the sun is always representing chesed. The sun is always the source of all life, uh, physically, right, metaphorically. Um, and so the sun is the source of life, the sun is the source of light, and light is chesed, and so... The, the sun is always deeper than the shade, and the shade is going to be the opposite. The shade is going to be the covering, the concealment, uh, the aspect of the din, of judgment. And so the deeper something is, uh, if you want to get to the layers of kindness within it, then just go deeper. And if you're still not there, then just go deeper. And then at a certain point, you will break through into the chesed aspect within it, into the neshama of that. And that's where everything is sweetened. That's why the Baal Shem Tov also teaches about how all judgment is sweetened in its source. Okay? Um, uh, all of the judgment is sweetened in its source. What does it mean in its source? Meaning if you take that energy, that point where you're at, where you're experiencing the concealment, the difficulty, the challenge, and just dive into it, dive into it deep enough completely surrendered to that energy, to the depths of it, where it begins. Seek, right, in your, in your meditation, in your awareness, seek with your awareness where that energy begins from, where that feeling starts from, in the absolute depth. And at that source, it is sweetened. The source of it is where it is sweetened, where everything at that point is nothing but kindness, awareness, beingness, okay? And so that's this big secret that Rabbi Nachman gives over to us in one small, tiny line. <laughs> Changes your whole life. So that's what he says here. Uh, this is why he was standing in a, in a deep place. Why well, does it mean he was standing in a deep place? He was standing now because he sweetened the judgment. He sweetened that burning fire of the lust of money. So now he's obviously standing in a place of chesed. And chesed is a deep place. Chesed is the deep place. That's how you call chesed. Just like the sun next to the shade is deeper than the shade. Okay? Kindness is the light of day. It's called kindness, as we know from the Pasuk in Tehillim. In the day, which means the midah, like the Zohar explains, the, the aspect of the day or the sphera that represents day is the sphere of chesed, 
relative to the night, which is the sphere of, is the is the concealment of that of that of that world of that day. And through the kindness, he merited to build the house, which is the aspect of that. Building the house, we said building the Beit HaMikdash, the Beit HaMikdash is built from that. It's through the dat that the house, the Beit HaMikdash is built. And so through this chesed, through this kindness, you build the dat. As we, as we saw earlier in the Torah, and that dot is what builds the, the house. So that's the beginning of the Seichel. We'll see the continuation of that, Bezvar Hashem, in the coming Shi'ar.